Alrighty, we're back in the lab again. All right, sorry about the hiatus on this uh, Dragon Link LNA. I'm gonna try to wrap this up uh, and try not to get too theoretical this time. Uh, my last couple of videos are kind of in depth and you know kind of pull in the stuff I do in my day job and kind of put it on YouTube, which is a little over the top. Um, so for this video, we're gonna be looking at the compression point, and then we're gonna look at how it actually helps you with. Uh, various different video receivers, you know, which ones you'll need it for, which ones you don't need it for, um, and what will, what kind of improvement should you expect or not expect. All right, let's get cracking. So our first measurement is going to be the 1 dB compression point. Um, and I think it's kind of important to explain why we care about this. Um, so there's a bunch of different figures of merit for our amplifier. Um, and the 1 dB compression point basically works like this. So this is our LNA, and it takes some signal, known amplitude, and ampli blah, <laughs> amplifies it. Um, and we found, I, if I remember correctly, it was around 13 uh, to 14 of dB of amplification of gain. All right, so if this input signal level gets to a certain amplitude, um, this amplifier can saturate, and instead of getting, you know, this signal plus that much gain, what you end up having is a waveform that's clipped, right? So it doesn't have the tops or the bottoms because it's saturated. And this ends up creating harmonics and distortion. And that's not what we want. Um, for our case here, we're going to use this 1 dB compression point. And what that means is, um, as you're increasing the signal level dB by dB, the output should, signal level should follow it. So if, let's just say we're going to go with 15 dB of gain, because that's a nice round number. If you're putting 0 dBm in, you should get plus 15 dBm out, right? If you put 1 in, you should get plus 16. 2 plus 17. At some point, the amplifier is going to saturate, and let's say you put 3 in, and you only get plus 17.5, right? You put 4 in, and you get plus... Let's see, 18. So I think that's the, the 1 dB compression point where you end up being, so 2, 17, 3, somewhere. It's somewhere in there. <laughs> I'm terrible with math. I haven't had enough copy. So anyways, um, there's a curve that relates the input power to the output, and at some point the output power kind of rolls off like that instead of following this theoretical line of input and output and power. And there, where that kind of knee is in the curve and it's 1 dB below where it should be, that's the 1 dB compression point. So it's, like we said before, one of many figures of merit for an amplifier, and we're just going to use it as a rough gauge to figure out if there's a signal that's close by to us, um, we don't want it swapping out our LNA if it's 1 dB compression point is, let's say, I don't know, minus 30 dBm. Um, that would be pretty terrible because this is the kind of signal you might be able to get if somebody has, like if you're launching your airplane and you fly out, I don't know, 399 feet a mile away, um, you're going to be down at the noise floor, but somebody, out, your buddy is right next to you going to launch. Um, his plane might come in at minus 30 dBm into your receiver in the LNA on the front of it, and it might actually compress the LNA, um, and it would swamp out your signal. And this also plays into a whole bigger issue of filtering on your video receiver in a whole nine yards. But anyways, long story long, if the number is low like this, um, close-in signals are going to get distorted. Um, even if they're not your signal. Um, but let's say if the, the number is in the, I don't know, 
plus 15 dBm range. Um, we're never going to see any problem with this LNA. The LNA has got enough linearity that life will be good. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We don't want to see a, a 1 dB compression point down here. We want to see it ideally above 0 dBm. So let's get the test equipment set up and caled out and take this measurement real quick. All right. I think we got everything set up. Just checking everything. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got a signal generator, tuned to 1258, 0 dBm. The reference plane for the SIGGEN is caled there. And then we've got the power meter up here with a ref relative measurement, and that's caled from here on out. And we're going to insert the LNA in there. So let's do it. Yeah. Do, 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 do. All right, Move this guy back a little. Pick up the power. So, turn this back on, and LNA is still off, so we can tell it's lossy. All right? Excuse me. All right, we're at zero dBm in. Turn the power on. There you go. So 14.2 dB of gain. Let me get a spreadsheet up on the screen so we can kind of keep track of what's going on. All right. So kind of like what we talked about before, um, starting with 0 dBm and not seeing saturation, we're already doing good. Um, so we're just going to do this as kind of an experiment in measuring the 1 dB compression point. So we can all kind of have nerding this fun. Yeah. All right. So we're at 0 dBm. We're going to be turning up our uh, transmit power by 1 dB levels, and we're going to fill out our spreadsheet right over here. All right, so the number is 1. And then we read the number up here, 6. I'm going to fast forward this for you guys so you guys don't have to deal with my boring blah, 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 blah. And through the magic of the Internet, hopefully you'll have some results in a second. Ta-da! Um, yep, so it looks like the 1 dB compression point is around 6 dBm in. Um, again, this is just one figure of merit for this, for amplifiers. Um, usually there's some rules of thumb, like you want to stay well away from this number, um, to prevent any intermodulation products, um, that kind of stuff. We're not going to get into that just because it goes off in a whole big old theoretical ball of wax that we don't really care about. Um, so, anyways, this number is good. Good enough for our purposes. On to testing some receivers. Okay, on to the fun part, the shootout. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> All right, maybe I had too much coffee today. Um, yeah, uh, on the screen, hopefully I'll switch to it now, we'll, you can see that there is nine video receivers. I had to count them just there. Um, so I've got them numbered one through nine. Uh, two 12 channel jobbers, three four channel uh, jobbers. The, uh, the one with all the junk on it is the one I normally use for one of my base stations that didn't feel like taking off all the Velcro and whatever. But it's the same. So number five, the one with all the stuff on it, is the same as number three and four. And then I've got four of the fat shark goggle modules all of them are the v3s um, so we'll have a hopefully good enough data set to show uh, what sensitivity for these different types of hardware should be um, and how the lna helps or doesn't help so let's get rocking i'll show you the setup so like the previous rapid fire video series we're going to be using the rodian schwartz smt06 we feed it video signal from an analog camera goes into the modulator um, out comes RF comes down here goes into a power divider this will be important later on uh, for another set of experiments that we're going to do in this video but for now 
all that matters is the reference plane. So the level that the signal generator displays on its screen is calibrated to this point. So we'll, we know that when we're measuring whatever sensitivity is, it'll be at this point, just like if you had an antenna connected to it. Uh, so that video signal comes out and goes into our Fat Shark goggles. Um, for obviously when we're going to use, be using the goggle modules, we'll have them plugged in there. Um, when we're not, we're using the auxiliary input here on the side, and we've got a USB webcam to take a look at what the goggle actually sees. So that's our basic setup. Okay, let's, uh, let's start our testing with the 12 channel vanilla digital receiver um, up in the upper yeah, right hand corner to you guys is a view from the fat shot goggles right above you or yeah <laughs> right above you is the already signal generator um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do an amplitude sweep from minus 85 dbm to minus 105 dbm the current power level is always displayed on this third line 1 dB steps, 2 seconds dwell. That's kind of to account for the latency of this uh, camera up here. It's a, just a cell phone that's got an IP webcam server, so it's got a little bit of delay. I'm looking at a USB webcam, so that's a little faster. The cam in the goggles is also USB webcam, so that's a little faster. But this guy up here, um, he's a little slower, as you can see. Um, so we got to give him a chance to catch up. So what I'm going to do is actually... Uh, try to overlay the videos of each receiver. So in this case, we'll start with this one um, and then with and without the LNA. So hopefully we'll get like a split screen view uh, synced up of how much the LNA actually helps or doesn't help depending on the receiver. So just for fun, we're going to let this one run. Um, so I'm going to come up here. You can see I've got execute single sweep active. And when I hit the select button, he's going to go. Uh, and keep an eye on this actual power level and what we see in the camera feed for the goggles. Ready? Here we go. And we wait. Minus 91, 92, 93. All right, minus 105. So, I don't know, kind of felt like it was mostly flyable around minus 97. So let's go ahead and put the LNA in. Whoop, let's get it out the way. And uh, we'll do a quick comparison. And then we'll start overlaying all the different videos with a little bit of movie magic. And... Uh, Plug it in, plug it in. All right, on is on. Let's do it again. Ready, set, rock and roll. So exciting. All right, all set. So, on my untrained eyes, looks kind of like a 3 dB-ish improvement. Um, proof will be in the pudding when we put the video side by side. Uh, so, we did the first one here. I'm going to run all the rest of them so we can do them all in one shot and see what we get. And, uh, yeah, let's call it the results.
So let's play things back at one-third speed. Uh, there's a couple things going on here that are interesting to point out. Um, keep an eye on the upper left-hand corner, the 27 megahertz uh, soft filtered 12 channel. Uh, as that one seems to get the most improvement from the LNA, but interesting thing to point out, that one also has the worst adjacent channel rejection, which we can cover in another video. <coughs> um, the four channel ones, which are, you know, kind of the, I don't know, Cadillac's the wrong word, but you know, kind of the the best modules kind of out there with the 17 megahertz soft filters, those tend to only get a, like a dB of improvement would appear from the LNA, so it's kind of questionable whether it's even worth getting the LNA for them if you have the four channel ones. Um, and the next wave goggle modules also seem to have very good sensitivity and are not really helped by the LNA. So the the real guy that seems to be helped the most is the kind of plain vanilla 27 megahertz filtered 12 channel uh, module. And he kind of seems to have the best sensitivity out of everything. But again, you have worst adjacent channel rejection um, when you use that guy. It's I want to say it's like 20 or 30 dB worse than a 17 megahertz filtered um, waveform. Alrighty, well, that video has meandered long enough. Uh, I think we're probably at the 20 minute mark almost. Uh, I'm going to cut it here just because it took forever to get all that testing done and mixed together. Uh, I think I almost killed my computer getting all the video mixed together. <laughs> so, uh, but it was a fun experiment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, learned something useful, it helps you decide whether or not to spend your money on something. Hopefully it'll help you. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Later. Yep. So, sometimes these fat shark modules don't lock properly. This one in particular for me is uh, a misbehavior. Um, yes, yeah, so sometimes you get this. I'm actually going to pause this and we're going to manually take over. All right, so manually took over, manually took over, excuse me. We're at minus 80 dBm, and we can see that it's just not a happy camper. So we switch channels, switch back. Um, and if we actually change the frequency, well, what I believe we'll find, let's see if this is right. No, he's not there. He's somewhere. I think we're getting mixing products there. Wherever he's at. So anyways, there's a synthesizer inside these modules. And uh, actually, there's multiple synthesizers, if I remember correctly. Um, but one of them is used to mix down and that synthesizer is unlocked and that's why um, the video signal never comes in clearly because it's actually instead of being parked on a mixing frequency so that the your rf your video signal come in gets mixed down to 480 megahertz it's going like this which means that your mixed down product is now going like this too um in frequency i should I should have like vertical or imaginary axes I could draw here. Bloop. Frequency. Vertical. Power. <laughs> so uh, anyways, the synth on some of these doesn't always lock. Um, so it's kind of hit or miss. You got to watch out for that. It's kind of, you get what you pay for. It's a $35, $40 receiver module. It is what it is. Um, so test your gear. You know, put your goggles down, make sure you get a nice clear picture. Um, here I can even show you if we turn up the power. It's still messed up. So you'd see this right away, like, hey, something's not right. Um, but it's also good to range check your gear. You know, don't don't be like, oh, everything works perfect. And um, before you, uh, you use a new model or something, make sure you put some attenuators on the antennas. 
do a range check down your driveway or down the street or something and make sure that whatever theoretical range you're get you should be getting you're at least getting i don't know in the ballpark what it should be um anyways i'm rambling let's get back to the test and i wanted to show you um i had previously power cycled the module with the switch on the bottom and that cuts off the module power and i had waited a couple seconds to turn it back on when i did a full power cycle from the lab power supply it actually came back and it's okay. So, yeah, you can't always trust these guys.